Um, here we go. So I'll go over this here if you want it. Do the video. I'm gonna show you how I do this. Okay. You videoing right now? It's going, sir. Okay. So from your fly line to, I add what's called a butt section to this. So when you're running a nymph rig, um, there's so many different types of nymph rigs. Um, this is going to be called the Provo Bounce Rig. So we'll go over this first, and then I'll talk about the other ones. Okay. So I'll show you how to rig this up. Um, first step is to create a butt section, which is basically where your bobber can slide up and down on, on here. Okay, so like if you go into a deeper pool, you're going to want to slide your bobber up. And if you're going to you know, shallower stuff, you can slide it down. So you want to give yourself some room. So I usually give about a wingspan. Most of these measurements are all done by wingspans because you don't really have like a, you know, a ruler to be like, oh, four and a half feet, you know? So most of, most everything I do is from a wingspan. So I'll do about a full wingspan here of a butt section, okay? Then down at the bottom, I'm gonna do like a knot here, make a loop, okay? So it's just like a uni knot or a loop knot, whatever. I just take a knot or the line, make a loop and then go over my finger and then poke it through like an overhand knot. And then you create that loop, just cut the tag off. And then you can tie line to it. So I've spliced or attached this piece of 6X to this. Now, you don't need to fish with 6X. If, if you're on the Provo, you need to fish with 6X probably right now. Um, but any other river you're ever going to go to, you don't ever need to fish with 6X. Okay. So what I do there is I measure out about, about a full wing span and about a half of line. So that's going to be about 7 to 8 feet of line. Okay, and then I'll, so that's your 6X and it's gonna attach to the butt section, okay? So, just so we don't get confused here, I'm gonna attach the bobber to this butt section here for you. So you understand that that goes there. Now that knot right there, the bottom serves the purpose of attaching line to, and then also so our bobber doesn't slip down any farther. Mm -hmm. So I like these bobbers, they're called uh, airlocks. There's just that nut, you unscrew it, slide the line down and then screw it back on top. If you just loosen the nut, you can slide the bobber up and down the wow, line. Wow, cool, yeah. Okay, so it's really nice, okay? It's good for water that's deeper or wavy water that's not gonna scare the fish when you splash this down on the water. Mm -hmm. So if you're fishing like little teeny streams that are fish are really spooky, you wouldn't wanna fish this big bobber, maybe a, a yarn indicator or something like that. Anyways, okay, so we're gonna go to the very bottom of this. Remember, it's about eight feet long. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go to the very bottom and we're gonna measure up about three feet probably. So I do about, measure up from the bottom about 14 to 16 inches there and then do another one of those. Those are your placements for where your flies are gonna go. Another one or what? So you go up from the very bottom about 14 inches mm -hmm. and then up another 14 inches. Okay. See how I did that? Mm -hmm. Okay. To do what though? Those are where your flies are going to go oh, on that okay. 14 inch mark and then this one. So you don't really see it, but just know that it's going to happen. So you'll see it here all come together. But So this is going to be where your first, your top fly is going to go right here. Okay. So how we're going to do that is we cut the line. So now we have two pieces. And we're going to do a triple surgeon's knot right there. You know how to do that one? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to do a triple surgeon's knot. Make your tag like about eight inches long, six, six inches is probably fine. And we're gonna do our triple surgeon's knot there. You make a loop and you poke those two bottom pieces down uh, through the loop three times. You're basically just splicing this line back together like how you'd make a tippet to a dry fly leader, right? Same thing. But you're gonna notice that on this loop, there's one side that has a long tag and the other side short. That's what you want. I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Cause that's where your fly's gonna go. So this is called uh, a tag. This has become a very popular way to attach nymphs with a lot of different nymphing methods now. Okay, so you get this nice little dangly tag here that your your nymph can hang off of uh -huh. and float freely. Uh -huh. Okay, adds a lot of uh, movement to your flies so they get caught in the current. They look a little bit more natural. Okay, I just do a half hitch right there. You don't have to do that, but I just do it so now that the line hangs down at a 90 degree angle. Can you see that? Uh -huh. I don't know if you see yeah. that, but... Okay, so that's your tag. So that's where one nymph's gonna go. Then you go to the very bottom of the line again, and you measure up another 12 to 14 inches there, cut that off, and do the exact same thing again, and you're gonna have a two nymph set up here. Okay, 
we create our triple surgeon's knot there. Boom. 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 Okay. Lick it a little bit so it cinches down, no, it doesn't get damaged. Make that little half hitch there. Like I said, you don't have to do that. I just do it because I think it looks better in the water, but not necessary. Okay, so there you go. I don't know if you can see that, but there's two tags hanging off that. One there, mm -hmm. it's up about two feet, and then there's another one that's up about a foot from yep. the very bottom. Got it. Okay, those are where your flies are gonna go. Now, you'll have that. You should be able to attach a couple flies to that. Like if you change flies, you should be able to maybe do two or three flies off of that tag before you have to cut it, depending on what knot you're using and depending on how good you're, you are at tying knots, okay? Now, at the very bottom here, I want my flies to be about, you know, three or four inches off the bottom here. So this this bottom piece here is just going down as dead ending, right? So you have two tags and then the piece just dead ends down here. What we're gonna do with that is we're gonna attach some weights to that. So we're gonna do an overhand knot here, right at the bottom. So there's a little knot at the very, very bottom there. Okay. What that does is that's gonna make it so the, the weights won't slip off the bottom when you cast it. We're gonna attach a couple weights down there. And I just use this pretty small split shot for this. So I think these are the B size split shots. And uh, you just, you know how to cl clamp on split shots, right? Hmm. Take one there and clap them on there. Just like a regular fishing split shot there. You just put them in the crease. And then you put the line through it and then you just clamp it on there. So then you have that and you can just unclamp it there and pull them right off if you need to. Mm -hmm. Or just rip it off the bottom and then tie a new knot. Okay. Okay. So adding weight <clears throat> depends on your water type, how deep it is, how fast it's moving. Um, you want to add or decrease the weight depending on that. Okay. This rig is called the bounce rig for a reason. It's supposed to bounce on the bottom of the river. So if your if your fly if your bobber's not bouncing like this, you need you don't have enough weight. So you need to add more weight. Okay, so that's the main purpose. Okay. So there you go. Just attach some flies to it, whatever you feel like fishing that day. I'm gonna throw on a couple flies here for you. Which flies do you want to use today? We're gonna use really small stuff like uh, some midge larvae, and there's pretty much everything's hatched already this this time of year. So there's not a whole lot of selection for these trout. Mostly just midges. Um, there's a few like mayflies still floating around, and some caddis floating around. So you got some real small stuff there. Yeah, itty bitty stuff. Yeah, so you can see that that's kind of really really the, hard for me to very hard put those on anymore very hard yeah even with my great glasses i have a, i fight with them for a long time i wish they there was a way those came pre pre-installed where you just kind of you know like the like the, like the extended uh, catfish hooks you get yeah stuff. that'd be fun yeah unfortunately that's kind of the unfortunate thing about it is it just yeah their small eyes Get some of those loops. Do you have those things? There's like a magnifying glass that hangs from your your thing. So I tie a double navy, Davy knot, double Davy, and that goes on to the fly. So I don't like to use the clinch knot. The clinch knot's okay, but to me, I think the clinch knot's uh, a kind of a bad knot compared to the double Davy. Um, the double Davy is a smaller knot, so it has a less of a profile. So when you're tying on these small hooks like this. You don't see like a big knot with your fly. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, I think it's stronger. I think it's a stronger knot and easier and quicker to tie if you get get the rhythm down with it. But so again, this is called the Provo River Bounce. The Provo River Bounce. Yep. All okay, right. Let's head out. We'll uh, give it a shot here.